Hi, welcome back to Inside the Studio. I'm Joanne Pollock with Remark Art Consulting, and I'm here today with Nancy Farrell. And Nancy is a longtime um, uh, institution, can I say, on the Guelph art scene. So thank you for agreeing to interview with me today, Nancy. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's a pleasure to be here in your studio. And your artwork has intrigued many people in Ontario, I would say, not, not only Guelph people, but uh, other people in Ontario as well. So I'm curious about the beginning of your art journey and perhaps you can talk about that. Okay. I grew up in a, a very small town, so I didn't, didn't even know what an art gallery was, <laughs> or I never even saw much art that was not a duck flying across the landscape uh, until I moved to a larger city uh, when I was 18 years old. Where, where, where was that? Where were you? Where Northern you? Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But the interesting thing about that area, it's all landscape and lakes because that influenced my art later. And Basically, um, because I had no exposure to fine art, because we didn't have art in high school. Hmm. So I didn't have any exposure to fine art whatsoever. Uh, so eventually I decided to dabble at the University of Guelph. And I was in my 50s when I started. And I decided I would take one course and just see how it went. <laughs> but I was kind of intimidated because sure. I knew that all of these other students had like had four years of high school fine arts, so they were had played much more and they had, had been exposed to a lot of materials, whereas I hadn't. So I was a little bit intimidated. But once I started, then I just never looked back. And I graduated from the University of Guelph in painting and sculpture uh, in 93. You're a brave woman, uh, but I'm sure it was a satisfying journey for you to do that. Oh, it was a lot of fun. And I wasn't the only older student there. Yes. And actually, I think all of our instructors loved the older students because we worked harder. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there has to be somewhere in your experiences, although you didn't feel that you were introduced to art at an early age or even in your adolescent um, period, but there had to be something in your life that sparked an interest in how you looked at the world and how you were going to put that, put that onto a canvas. So was it a grandmother? Was it an aunt? Was there someone in the family who, who had that Leaning. There was not one single person wow. in my family or background who had any interest in art hmm. whatsoever. Wow. Nobody. Wow. The, so when I moved to a larger city and began to look around me, then I saw all this artwork and I thought, oh wow, that's kind of interesting. Looks like fun, but it looks like it's a lot of hard work because I don't, I don't know anything about art whatsoever. Yeah. That's really unusual, mm -hmm. I must say. <laughs> and for you then to take a leap in your 50s into going into a university art program mm -hmm. is all, it's admirable and all ra rather um, astounding that you had the courage to do that, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually started out in pottery at the Waterloo Potters Workshop. It was clay sculpture, so I was doing a lot of figurative, fairly good size clay sculptures, and we lived in the country at that point, so I could smoke fire in, in barrels outside and so on, and I showed a lot of the sculpture all, all around Toronto, and, and actually I don't think I even have much left, because it all sold quite re readily. Lucky you. Yeah. Lucky but you. as I aged and my joints got uh, not quite as flexible, clay sculpture is very heavy. Mm -hmm. It weighs a ton. Mm -hmm. And to haul all this stuff around mm -hmm. at a certain point 
and I began to, to develop arthritis in my hands. So, you know, the writing was on the wall that I would have to stop clay sculpture. But I had drawn, I, I had done some drawing, I had done some painting, and so I just, just flipped over into painting. When I first started painting, it was realism, and not surprising, realistic landscape, <laughs> because that's where I grew up was in landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still very interested in landscape. As I tried to loosen up my landscape, I thought, oh, I'm having a hard time loosening this up to be more expressive with landscape. So I bit the bullet and went all the way to non-objective art, which simply means there isn't a realistic uh, person, place, or thing. So when and I, you're working with the design elements more because I had to go that route in order to get loose before I kind of went back to some landscape. Now I combine them often. Boy, that's great advice for a lot of artists who struggle with that aspect of not being able to loosen up. Your, your work is very organic, Nancy, mm -hmm. and very, very fluid and you know, do you paint every day? Do you, how, ideas come into your head? Um, how often do you actually go at it? Um, right now I would say not every day. And sure. I, I, I think because I was, I always had a paying job because I always felt that it was very hard to earn a living from yes. fine art. Which, which was, which <laughs> is true. <laughs> which is true. <laughs> so I had a paying job, so I was always, working almost full time and then I would paint or sculpt on the side. Uh, and I experimented with uh, cold wax, with pastel. I did a lot of figure drawing at the time and uh, yeah. Do you have a certain professor or artist that sort of stamped your soul and made you want to go further? No. No. I know. <laughs> I know that sounds odd, but mm -hmm. I look at a lot of other painters' work, and my inspiration comes from the land out there, mostly, but then seeing how other artists, and mostly contemporary artists, interpret the land. You are a complete so. anomaly to any artist that I've ever <laughs> talked to, Nancy, and it's really refreshing that you are your own person who marches to your own drum and you are not trying to emulate or to copy uh, anybody else, right? Right, right, yeah. You have enjoyed really tremendous success and I know that you sell well in, in major art shows uh, are you selling in the States right now, Nancy? No, because I really don't have time to get to all the shipping. Right. I have inquiries, but I just am not shipping mm -hmm. at all right now. It's a, it's a space problem, and it's my time right. problem, because I'm also a terror giver for a couple people. Sure. And it's just time. Sure, so sure. So I don't ship much. But you've had success in... in, in Canada certainly yes. has had success yes. locally. Um, have you mentored any young artists? No, not really. No, um, and so you just are. You're just <laughs> doing your. Thing. You're just doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Are you always painting in acrylic, Nancy? Yes. Okay. And is there any desire to paint in other than acrylic? No. I really like the fast drying aspect of acrylic because uh, wh when I first started to paint, I went into watercolor because there's a lot of watercolor in Guelph. And I very soon discovered this was not me because I like to go over things and over and over and, and layer, layer things and change things. And, and you can't do a lot of that in watercolor. Right. And so I, I went to acrylic. Also, I've always painted in spaces that didn't have the best ventilation, so I knew, even, even though I had worked in oil paint at university, I didn't want to work in oils at home mm. because I just didn't have the ventilation for it, and mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm perfectly happy with acrylic, mm -hmm. and that's where I've stayed. 
I mean, I use a, a lot of mark making in my you work, do. so I'm using charcoal, I'm using graphite, I'm using pastel uh, combined with acrylic. And, you know, I look at I look at a lot of artists, and your work is just it's got something there that is so engaging. Um, I, I I can't describe it. I guess it's it's just when you know it, when you see it, right? Yeah. Right. That it's uh, that it's incredibly beautiful. Your pa palette is vast. It's gorgeous. I do like the fact that you incorporate you know lots of different things into it. Yeah. And um, oh, it has to be interesting. So you have to have different things in them. What? Like if I I hate boring paintings, so I tend to put probably too much in and then have to edit but what do people say about your work when they think it was done by a man oh. I've had people say to me you didn't do this they, they look at my grandmother face and figure you didn't paint this I said yes I did what would that mean isn't Why that would... interesting Why I thought that's, that's interesting there's nothing I, masculine I think it's because I use a lot of very strong, strong colors or co contrast yeah I think so so, Where for example, let's talk about yeah, this, this one, Nancy. Yeah. And you immediately see the strong contrast right. in values. So yes. You've got a lot of very dark values, and you've got the extremely light values. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very cognizant of the value system mm -hmm. right in the beginning. It doesn't matter so much what color you use, as long as the value is there. Mm -hmm. But before I start, I usually pick a palette. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I will go too wild. So I figure I don't go too wild. <laughs> Good girl. That's what I love to hear. The so sh the shapes obviously are, are, and, are important. And yeah. So so I will you know say to the viewer who may not know anything about abstract art, pay attention to where your eye goes, and and then we discuss why is it going there? Why is your eye looking there? And what does this remind you of? It's obviously going to remind uh, the viewer of something usually completely different than what I may have Absolutely. in mind. Because mine's a lot of experimental. Um, I always have a little hint of a landscape, like in that one where there's the leaf mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of thrown in there amongst all, all the other stuff. But your eye moves around nicely. There Certainly isn't does. any reason. Your eye isn't stopping in the middle. It goes out to all the edges. So I'm very cognizant of where my values are. And it's so interesting, Nancy, because there's a lot, there's a lot to give the viewer pause. That's right. Yeah. To look at it and to, and to say, okay, is that are those piano keys in there? You know, um, it, it, is that a shield of a, a soldier or whatever, a warrior? I mean, there are so many, is this a horse? Are there so many things that people see? And of course, you know, as you've express, expressed quite nicely, that it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. So there is no real answer to abstraction. That's correct, yes. Right. I have a question to ask you now. Sure. You know the edges on that painting yes. are white, and I'm finding it's just too much of a contrast, I think. Right. So what color do you think I should paint the edges? Um, well, I think painting the edges is a, is a, a beautiful way to finish off the painting, Nancy. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people nowadays don't want to incur the expense of having to frame things. Mm -hmm. So I, if I were you, I think I would go for black. Oh, okay. Uh, I think black would uh, offset some of the some um, of the contrast. Right, that and starkness. you're still going to pick up some of these uh, nuances. Some of the darker values. And right. That that, that would be okay. that would be my suggestion. But this is a lovely piece, uh, for sure. It's on board. Are you painting on board all uh, the time? A fair amount on board, just because you can you can really etch into the board without having to worry about poking holes in the canvas. Right. <laughs> right. Which is no fun to repair. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know so, what, of all the pieces mm -hmm. here, Nancy, I'm quite captivated by uh, that one. Interesting. What, do you title your pieces, by the way? I do, and I have a, a very hard time with titles. Fortunately, I have 
a, a daughter who was an English major, okay. and she loves poetry. Oh. And yeah. so she can look at it and suggest titles. Mm -hmm. And I write down all these, and I think, okay, yeah, good title. So I like using uh, literature or poetry, something. Um, and the titles are all in the back. And I don't remember what that title was. I wonder if I can get it off. What was that one? Uh, it's Fragile, Strange New World. Strange New World, yeah. Well, it is a strange new world. Yeah. So I have uh, been painting a series where uh, there's a, a very low horizon line and uh -huh. then what I consider kind of a sky thing with various things floating around in there, the Love unknown it. stuff, Love it. Love stuff, it. which, you know, kind of speaks of climate change too, if you want to take it that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, but there's something very, um, uh, you know, I identifiable <laughs> in a way you're, you know, you're always trying to find a touchstone with abstract work. Right. Well, you know, right. is this a house and is this, is you know, it, what, what is it? Yes. What is yeah. it? Yeah. And that's tough, you know, like, cause people will, when I'm trying to sell a piece of abstract art and people always want me to say, do you see, oh gosh, I see, I see my aunt in there or what, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I see a sexual thing. And I say, well, if that's what you see, then that's what you see. I might not see that, but if that's what you see, then that's... And it's all valid. It's all valid, it's absolutely. It's all valid. And it's all, right. all very subjective. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, your style is so vast. I mean, you know, from this to this to this to, mm -hmm. you know, quite vast. So it's it's interesting, and some of it really grabs me. It's been a pleasure, Nancy, to speak with you this afternoon. Thank you very much, Joanne. I have met you um, over time at various places and have always enjoyed your work. And I just wanted to get to know you a little bit better, Nancy. So thank you very much for spending time with me today. Oh, you're welcome. You're and we'll, welcome. we will look forward to, uh, to seeing what comes out of that right. brush next. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome.